Welcome to the Kentucky Alternate Assessment Employability Skills Attainment Record Administration Guide Training for School Year 2021-22. This module will walk you through the Employability Skills Attainment Record Administration Guide. Most slides will reference specific pages. Please print a hard copy or access an electronic version from the Kentucky Alternate Assessment Program KAAP webpage before continuing this training. The Employability Skills Attainment Record, referenced to as the ESAR, e -S -A -R, is one of the four components of the Kentucky Alternate Assessment. The ESAR was developed for students with significant cognitive disabilities in an alternate course of study and working towards the Alternative High School Diploma. The ESAR is designed to provide a career readiness measure within the post-secondary readiness indicator of Kentucky's accountability system. There are two ways for students to demonstrate post-secondary readiness within the Kentucky's accountability system. Students must earn a high school diploma or be classified as a grade 12 non-graduate and meet the requirements of one type of readiness, academic readiness or career readiness. In alignment with regular assessment, the achievement of the career readiness is not mandatory. The accountability system allows for meeting the requirements of the uh, academic readiness or career readiness. However, school districts must provide students opportunity and access to work toward career readiness. This includes students participating in the alternate assessment. The ESAR is a rating scale that assesses student demonstration of skills linked to the employability and foundations academic standards alternate assessment, typically referred to as the EFASAA or EFAS. The standards within the EFAS align with a subset of the standards assessed by the Career and Technical Education End of Program or EOP assessment. For alternate for articulated credit and the CTE pathways standards documents, the EFAS standards are included in Appendix A of the administration guide. The ESAR includes 30 items. The ESAR is administered to all 12th grade students working toward achievement of career readiness status within the post secondary readiness component of Kentucky's accountability system. Working towards means the student has completed the coursework leading to the career work experience certification or is in the process of completing the courses. The courses are documented on the student's multi year course of study and transcript. A student in grade 11 may be assessed early if the student has completed the first two courses leading to the CWC and is scheduled to complete the remaining two courses before graduation. This slide shows coursework leading to the CWC and the conditions for early ESAR assessment of students in grade 11. The requirement means the student has already taken developing career options and developing leadership skills as indicated on the student high school transcript and before graduation will complete the experience and workplace principles and individualized career work experiences. A grade 14 student has continued opportunity for assessment on the ESAR if the benchmark has not been met previously at grades 11 or 12. Note the ESAR is administered is not I'm sorry is not administered to students with a graduation code. A student will not be included in the accountability reporting until the year of high school exit with a graduation code. If a student is assessed at the multi multiple grades, the scores are stored by the Kentucky Office of Career and Technical Education OCTE until student exits with a graduation code. The highest score will be selected for accountability. 
The highest possible rating on the ESAR is 60. The benchmark is 37. The ESAR is completed by the Qualified ESAR Administrator or the QEA in collaboration with other team with other members of the student's instructional team. The QEA must be a certified staff member. The QEA may be the teacher of record or another certified district representative. The teacher of re record is typically the primary special education teacher of the student who is most familiar with the student's performance across multiple settings. Other team members include the special education teachers other than the QEA if a student has more than one special education teacher. General education teacher or teachers, depending on the extent a student participates in the general education program. Other certified staff members who have knowledge of the student's current performance levels in the areas assessed by the ESAR. Others such as the student's speech or language pathologist, occupational therapist, career technical education teacher, guidance counselor or school psych psychologist, often have valuable information about the student's performance in diff different settings. Classified staff such as the employment specialist and paraprofessionals can assist in providing information about a student's current performance levels in the skills assessed by the ESAR. But the responsibility of scoring and providing the primary information is that of the certified staff members. The QEA must pass the qualification quiz before ESAR administration begins. Upon successful completion of the quiz, the QEA may be prompted to download the, the ESAR. Only a QEA will be able to assess the ESAR from the KAEP system. The QEA will print the ESAR and copy for each student eligible for an assessment in the current school year. Just as the QEA may begin assessing students upon completion of the qualifying ESAR quiz, consultation with other team members may also begin at that time. To arrive at final ratings, of the full instructional team must meet at least once per year. Experience in the field indicates the best time to complete the ESAR is prior to the transition meeting or the annual admissions and release committee ARC meeting. The administration of the ESAR must be completed by May 27, 2022. Every ESAR item must be rated on a three-point scale. There must be a response for each item. When rating an item, any mode of communication or responding that is typically utilized by the student is acceptable. The rating descriptions are on pages five and seven of the administration guide. Zero is the response for skills and concepts the student does not demonstrate in any setting. One is the response for skills the student displays only with some level of prompt, such as a verbal cue, partial physical guidance, or modeling. A rating of one is also used for skills that are displayed inconsistently. If a student can demonstrate a skill occasionally but not consistently, then the skill must be rated one, developing or supported. Two is the response for skills that the student clearly has mastered and performs independently. To be rated as two independent or mastered, the student must demonstrate the skill consistently over time. The student does not have to demonstrate the skill every time, but over the course of the of instruction, the student has shown that he or she may has mastered the skill without being prompted. Note that the student may use some type of support. A student who is independently asked for a support and or uses a support independently while demonstrating a skill can be rated as a two. For example, a student uses a visual calendar as as a support. If the student asks for the visual calendar and or independently uses it to complete a task, the student can be rated as a two if the student 
is prompted to use the visual calendar and the student would be rated as a one. Some ESAR items are scored based on performance at a work site. A work site is defined as a non-school integrated competitive environment where the student the students engage in a work-based learning options customized and aligned to their post-secondary goals, including entrepreneurship, mentoring, shadowing, internship, or cooperative education. For careers found only in educational settings, the placement should be outside of the school's, the student's school of attendance. The rationale supporting the worksite definition is provided in Appendix B. The general instructional cycle followed by teachers and related services personnel typically includes the steps outlined on page eight of the administration guide. Embed the standards within the EFAS into instruction, curriculum, and IEPs as appropriate. Assessing for maintenance of skills previously mastered aligns with good instructional practices. Assessing for maintenance at the beginning of each year is recommended as well as main maintenance checks throughout. Skills not maintained should be included in the current year's instruction. The rating of the ESAR item must be based on direct observation of demonstrated student performance and must be documented. The instructional team does not rate ESAR items based on what they think the student may or may not be able to do. Documentation must verify the rating. This documentation is called supporting evidence. In most cases, supporting evidence for the ESAR is derived from existing progress data collected during the instructional process. Teachers and related service personnel typically keep progress data in students' working folders. During the administration of the ESAR, the student's instructional team will select existing progress data from the student's working folder to support the 0, 1, or 2 ratings. The documentation is then stored as supporting evidence in the Career Ready Alternate Assessment folder, the CRAF. Supporting evidence may take various forms, including but not limited to staff journals, with results of informal or formal observation, workplace performance evaluations, behavioral checklists, videos of student demonstration of performance, and employment specialist monthly reports, specifically monthly reports for job development or job coaching. Existing documentation for a skill assessed by an ESAR item may be dated within the last four years. However, when a student masters and performs a skill independently in the previous year, an activity or observation to check for maintenance of the skill must be performed during this, the school year of the ESAR administration. To re retain a previous status that a student has mastered and performs independently, the current year performance check must indicate the student continues to demonstrate the skill the skill consistently over time. The ESAR item rating must be based on the current year performance check. The check for maintenance takes precedence over previous data and substantiates the response selected on the ESAR. As needed, team members should supplement supporting evidence with additional assessment activities. For skills not yet observed and documentation, team members should create opportunities for observations and assessment. This slide depicts an example for when progress data indicates a student mastered a skill in a year prior to the administration of the ESAR. In grade 10, the student independently used charts, guides, and written directions to complete task and work assignments. The teacher conducted a check for maintenance of the skill in grade 11. If the student hadn't maintained the skill instruction 
would be provided. The same process would occur in grade 12. During the administration of the ESAR in grade 12, the most current maintenance check supporting evidence would determine the final rating of the ESAR item. In this example, the student is able to independently use charts and, and guides, but hasn't mastered written directions to complete tasks and work assignments. The members of the student instructional team may determine assessment activities are needed to supplement the existing supporting evidence. Consensus must be achieved when the student's instructional team meets to determine the final rating on ESAR items. For many items, the supporting evidence will lead to immediate consensus. For this reason, team members may wish to focus on discussing and resolving any difference for items about which there is no general agreement. In cases of non-agreement, the team members should ex examine the supporting evidence for the basis of differing ratings. If team members cannot reach agreement for, or if they determine the student demonstrates different performance levels at different times or under different conditions, the lowest of the ratings being considered must be assigned to the item. The ESAR is considered secure testing material and must follow the administration code and regulation established for all state required assessment and optional tests administered by school personnel that are reported in the Kentucky's accountability system. 703-KR-5080 Administration Code for Kentucky's Educational Assessment Program can be reviewed in its entirety on the KDE website. The link to the re regulation is provided on page 10. Page 10 of the administration guide also contains concepts selected from the regulation test security section and more closely address a rating scale assignment like the ESAR. Be sure to review and follow the all test security requirements. The Career Ready Alternate Assessment Folder, or CRAF, houses the documentation for the ESAR and the Career Work Experience Certification, CWC, the second measure of the career readiness. The Qualified ESAR Administrator, or QEA, is responsible for maintaining the CRAF. After completing the ESAR training and qualification quiz, the QEA will print the ESAR certificate and file in the CRAF. Provide a copy to the BAC or DAC. File the student information page in the CRAF. File a signed copy of the complete, completed Code of Ethics in the CRAF. Download the ESAR and copy for each student eligible for ESAR administration. Maintain the ESAR in the CRAF when not in use and File the completed ESAR and documentation in the CRAF at the end of each school year. CRAF components include in the following order, student information, teacher code of ethics form, qualification quiz certifications, employability skills attainment record, and the career work experience certification. The Career Work Experience Certification Administration Guide for School Year 2021-22 is linked in the manual and provides information about CWE section. The Student Information Page Form is stored in the Student Information section. Form components include student name, school, district, grade, State Student Identification Number, the SSID. District Enrollment Date, if the student is new to the district. Date Participation in the Alternate Assessment was determined if placement occurred during current school year. Accommodations listed in the current IEP for the student and the name and signature of the supervising teacher. A link to the KDE Alternate Assessment and Accountability Folder webpage 
is where the student information page can be found is provided on page 13 of the administration guide. There are two versions, one electronic version and the other is a form that, that is downloadable to save. School personnel assisting with the administration of the ESAR must sign the Code of Ethics. The Code of Ethics must be provided to acknowledge that the school personnel have read and agreed upon, agreed to comply with all policy areas shown on the slide, including the professional ethics, educational defensibility, student ownership, accommodation, and student performance. If the QA has multiple career folders, the signed code of ethics may be duplicated for placement in each. Any non-school personnel who assists with the ESAR administration should sign a non-disclosure form, which is filed in the CRAD. A link to the forms are provided on page 12 of the administration guide. The qualifying quiz certification component of the craft houses the ESAR certificate documenting the QEA successfully completed the qualification quiz. The ESAR certificate is printed from the online training system, the OTS, housed on the Kentucky Alternate Assessment Program, KEP website. A copy is placed in the craft and one copy for is provided to the back or DAC. The ESAR component of the of the craft can be included up to five years. The number is dependent upon when and how many times the ESAR is completed for a student. If the ESAR is completed early at grade 11, the folder section begins that year. If not, the ESAR documentation begins at grade 12. A reminder, the ESAR is required for all students at grade 12 working toward career readiness designation within the accountability system. If the student exists with a grade or graduation code, I'm sorry, if the student exits with a graduation code at the completion of grade 12, the ESAR documentation ends at, at, grade, at that grade level. If the student does not meet benchmark in grade 11, if eligible for early administration or grade 12 and continues receiving services as a grade 14 student, they may continue to be as assessed on the ESAR. A section is added for each grade 14 year until the student either meets benchmarks or exits with a graduation code. The ESAR documentation is kept each year and includes the completed ESAR and supporting evidence, anecdotal notes regarding specific student information on the ESAR, and documentation concerning the meeting to complete the record, who, where, and when. Career readiness will be reported by the KDE's Office of Career and Technical Education, OCTE. Therefore, personnel from OCTE will audit crafts during monitoring or review visits for career and technical education programs. At the time of the folder audit, the reviewers will confirm that the supporting evidence substantiates the rating of the ESAR items. At the local level, DACs may choose to monitor the craft to review programming and assessment compliance. This is a district level decision. The QEA reports the rating of the student's ESAR performance levels to the Kentucky Department of Education. The QEA transfers the ratings for the 30 ESAR items to the Career Ready Database, CRD. The CRD is housed on the KAAP website. June 3rd, 2022 is the last day to enter scores in the CRD. Grade 12 students are entered into in the CRD by KAAP personnel. Grade 11 student 
eligible for early administration will not appear in the CRD, nor will students in grade 14. The DAC dose or district level administrator registers a student in the database, then contacts Sherry Craig or Daryl Mattingly to request the student record be open. Once the student record is open, scores may be entered into the CRD. So again, a grade 11 student eligible for early administration will not appear in the CRD, nor will students in grade 14. Pages 15 through 16 summarize the steps for completion of the ESAR. The QEA facilitates the process, but the student instructional team members also have responsibilities. When school begins, the QEA and instructional team members begin instruction in the EFAS document student progress and maintain progress data in the student working folder. The QEA must complete the ESAR training and qualification quiz in the OTS by December 22nd, 2021. The ESAR quiz will close on December 22nd, 2021. The QEA prints and files the ESAR certificate in the CRAF. Provide a copy to the BAC or DAC. Next, the QEA files the student information page in the CRAF. The QEA and school personnel assisting with administration of the ESAR sign the Code of Ethics. The QEA files a copy of the signed Code of Ethics in the CRAF. Non-school personnel who assist with the completion of the ESAR sign a disclosure form. The QEA files the form in the CRAF. The QEA downloads the ESAR from the OTS and makes a copy for each student eligible for the ESAR administration. The QEA completes the ESAR demographic information for each student. During the school year, the QEA and instructional team continue instruction on the EFAS document, student progress, and maintain progress data in the student working folder. The QEA rates ESAR items based on supporting evidence. Throughout the year, the QEA consults with the other team members who may provide supporting evidence. The QEA keeps the ESAR and supporting evidence in the craft within the secure location when not in use. During the instructional team meeting or other meetings if needed, the QEA reviews the ESAR directions with the instructional team members. Together, the team reviews all standards and test items for common understanding. Then instructional team members discuss each item and supporting evidence. They jointly decide how the student's performance on each item should be scored, either as a zero, one, or two. The QEA documents the ratings and gathers the supporting evidence for each test item. After the assessment, the QEA reviews the completed ESAR to ensure that all items have been marked. The QEA then stores the finalized ESAR and supporting evidence in the CRAF within a secure location. By June 3, 2022, the, ESAR, the QEA must transfer the ratings of the student performance to the CRD housed on the KAEP website. So again, by June 3rd, 2022, the QEA must transfer ratings of the student performance to the CRD housed on the KAP website. This concludes the ESAR training module. You may complete the ESAR qualification quiz on the KEP website. Review the ESAR administration guide if needed before assessing the quiz. You will have three opportunities to pass the quiz. Upon the third unsuccessful attempt, you will be locked out of the CRD system and must notify your DAC, DOS, or district level administrator. Upon successful completion of the quiz, you will be granted access to the ESAR.
best wishes on the quiz and for the 2021-22 school year.